This is Twit. Okay, cis internals. There was a surprising bit of news involving the much beloved cis internals tools. Um, as many of our listeners know, they were a collection and still are of truly unique and powerful utilities that were originally created by Mark Rusunovich and Bryce Cogswell. Their little Texas based company was purchased lock, stock, and barrel by Microsoft back in 2006. Much to many people's chagrin, since everyone was quite worried at the time that it might spell the end of that fabulous and really irreplaceable tool set. Fortunately, that didn't happen, and the tools remain available today from Microsoft uh, and are still being maintained and upgraded. Which makes this news of a recent discovery all the more curious and troubling. A software engineer by the name of Rake Schneider has reported that he has discovered DLL hijacking bugs in the Sys Internals tools. Uh, oh, in fact, uh, th it's this guy's page. It's written in German, and it was Firefox's built-in translator that allowed me to uh, t turn it into English. Um, so the curious and troubling part is that Microsoft has done nothing about these problems. They remain unpatched. And worse, their existence is now public and widely known, even after a 90-day responsible disclosure window. So Rake's detailed public disclosure reads, and this is just the, the beginning of it, he said, quote, I've identified and verified critical vulnerabilities in almost all SysInternals tools and presented the background and attack in a video. A summary of the weak spot and the link to the video can be found here in this blog post. These tools, developed by Microsoft, and actually originally SysInternals, of course, are widely used in IT administration and are often used for analysis and troubleshooting. The vulnerability demonstrated in the video affects numerous applications of the suite and allows attackers to use DLL injection to inject and execute defective code. And now, okay, that may be part of the translation. We know it could be not defective, but malicious code. And he said, now that more than 90 days have passed since the initial disclosure to Microsoft, it's time to talk about it. And then he goes on to do so. I have a link to his posting uh, in German in the show notes. And if you've got a translator built into your uh, browser and don't speak German, then it'll do a good job of translating it into English for you. Actually, my translation, and I'm not sure where it came from, says malicious code. Ah, yeah. interesting. Okay. So, yeah, this is ARC, so I don't know what translator it's ah, using. Yeah, interesting. Probably not um, Google. Okay, so the problem is it's a well-known and common problem with Windows DLLs, where, and, you know, among many problems, DLLs made sense back when we had 128 megabyte Windows 2 computers because it was a way of sharing code. And the idea would be that rather than app various applications all needing to bring their own code along, not only because we were have we had applications that were sharing 20 megabyte hard drives or floppies, but because there wasn't much RAM. So you didn't want you, so you just wanted to be able to share these libraries. Great idea back then. Today, it's pure legacy. It absolutely makes no sense whatsoever, but there's never been a point in time where Microsoft could break this. So we still have it today. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast, or just click one of the links below. Security Now.